Welcome to Conversations with Cubit. Thank you for joining me tonight. And before we get started, I have to tell you how much I appreciate all the love we get week after week after week supporting these conversations. I can tell you this, as long as you can find value in these conversations, we will keep having these conversations. So if you're looking for information, if you're looking for hope, if you're looking for inspiration, you have found the right place. Uh, I would like to describe tonight's conversation. If you would let me describe it with just one word, that word would have to be hype. And if you gave me a second word, I would say hopeful. I'm telling you, I'm very excited about what you're about to learn and who you are about to meet. Now, if you are new to these weekly conversations, welcome to the family. Yes, we consider you family. Be sure to check out some of our past conversations on my YouTube channel. Just look up Conversations with Cubit on YouTube. And once you find that page, please subscribe. We're trying to get those followers up. We know you're watching anyway, but just hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And after that, check out any of the past conversations you want. But right now, I need you to do me a favor and share tonight's conversation. That's right, do not keep this conversation to yourself. You absolutely must share this conversation with your community. Please hit the share button right now. Okay, once again, I have to send a very special thank you to my friends, Richard and Amy Janes, for hosting our weekly conversations out here in Green Pasture Studios. It is fantastic here. The studio is out in Spencer, Oklahoma, and it is actually a full-fledged movie production studio. They do so much out here, including uh, a movie and film production academy. They teach people how the game works. So please look up Green Pasture Studios for more information. For those of you who are new to this conversation or you just need a little reminder, let me tell you what my three simple goals for these conversations week after week after week happen to be. One, I simply just wanna add value to people in my community. Two, I wanna inspire you to believe in what people and communities can become when we're willing to work together. And three, just love people, period. No strings attached. All that means is I want you to be inspired and I want you to get useful information and resources. And I wanna celebrate individuals, groups, and organizations who are making a positive impact on our community. Every conversation will be about information, inspiration, and hope. Speaking of hope, my guest tonight is Les Thomas Sr. Les Thomas Sr. He is a retired veteran and an Oklahoma native. He honorably served the United States Air Force for 20 years. And during that time, he served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation, en Operation Enduring Freedom. Les made a career outside of the military as a notable music artist, traveling as a motivational speaker, and just being a staple in his community. He has been writing and creating and producing music since 2003. And as a solo artist, he has released three albums, two of which charted on iTunes. He's been featured in The Source magazine, Hype magazine, and Urban magazine. His final album, Vertical, uh, and his first book, entitled Three Levels of Influence, released just this year. We're going to talk all about the one just last week, really. And during football season and basketball season, you can catch Les on the microphone at Oklahoma State University games, hyping up as many as 60,000 people. He is really good at this, too. And so good, even the opposing fans get caught up in the energy he creates. Uh, prior to being the voice of the game day experience, Les led pregame chapel for the football team. I'm very, very proud to know this man. I'm very, very proud to be in relationship with him. But this is how I know Les. Les spends most of his time impacting the next generation. He spent many years working with Youth for Christ and continues to spend most of his time working to provide a solid foundation for any city youth and to help them shape the futures of our teens. He is doing that day in and day out. This man has a huge heart for the community. In fact, I can't think of a single time I've called him and asked him to help serve youth or any other community event of mine that I was a part of that he didn't show up. A couple of those things was working with me at the Oklahoma City Police Department every summer at Jam and Hoops Fest and serving as a mentor with me at Kojak, the uh, juvenile correctional facility in Tecumseh. Les is very passionate about racial reconciliation, and we talk often about how unity, grace, and love is his weapons of choice to combat racism. He is now, uh, he has a long list of recognitions and accomplishments ranging from the large stuff everyone would recognize to the small things only keep small community groups would recognize. He's all over the place. I hope we can talk about some of those tonight. I'm sure we'll get into some of those recognitions. 
So Les continues to live right here in Oklahoma City, but he can live anywhere in the world. And he will tell you of all the accomplishments that he has, the greatest accomplishment is his family. He's been married to a lovely lady named Mary for 22 years. Mm -hmm. Together they have two amazing children, Les, 23, and uh, Layla, 20. Uh, And in his spare times, he likes to fish, he likes to cook, and when you cook, you gotta eat. So, uh, yeah. and he likes vacationing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my friend and my homie, my dog, Les Thomas Sr. What's up, my man? <laughs> What's up? Hey, two things. One, my kids are 24 and 21. I better correct that because, especially my daughter, she, she just say, had a birthday. She I just know, had I saw a birthday. birthday. My son just had and a birthday. And you just had a birthday. So I, I need to update that. my, uh, I'm firing my PR person, man. You know what I'm saying? The second thing is, I could go now. I mean, you read all that? I mean, what? It was off the heart. It was like, I, the only thing I read was the age and the names. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying like, I mean like, woo, I was sitting there listening. I, I just actually kind of got a little overwhelmed thinking about the goodness, um, the goodness of God, man, just thinking about my life. So, you know, that that's that's cool, man. I'm glad to be here with you, Waylon, man. We are going to have fun over this next three hours. Y'all lock in three for hours. three, three hours. hours. We're, we're, we're not doing for three hours. We're not <laughs> doing for, but I'm we joking. can talk for three hours. I'm we just, really we could can talk. And we have but, for three hours yeah, and we have. Yeah. Like we like the Dallas trip. <laughs> like I, I well, I, oh man, it was yeah. it's great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So before we get started, uh <laughs> and I and I know that you really pour a lot into uh your time with people, people interview you, you got you give them your heart. Yes, sir. But there's a lot of things I don't think they know about you. That's I want to find out today. Live. Today, live. Let's live. do it. Live. So you want me to get some exclusives? I got you. I'm going to get some exclusives. I'm going to give one today that not, ain't nobody heard. Ain't nobody heard. Okay. Right. That's what I want. Let's that's what it. I want. That's how we go viral. You're my is big it? bro, man. That's, okay. how, that's what we do. All right. First thing I'm going to ask you is this or that, right? I'm going to I'm going. I'm going to put the question out for you. I want to see where we align. Okay. I've done this with several guests. Yeah. And very few of us align. And we... I think we align, uh-huh. but I'm going to add. So you need to choose one of these. One of the, okay. Every, every, okay, you ready? Got you. What's worse, doing the dishes or doing the laundry? Laundry. <laughs> what? <laughs> laundry. Come you on. Know yes. Come we on. Are, I can put them down. All right. Yeah. I can put them down. That's, <laughs> That's the good. first connection right yep. there. Yep. All right. Uh, for you, is it sneakers or tennis shoes? Ah. Uh, I don't say either one, but I'm a go. Oh, what? That's not either one. What's the other choice? Well, well, let's see. Uh, I would say tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, of course. What's the other thing? What do you? I call just them? say shoes, man. Like I don't, I don't ever call them sneakers or tennis shoes. I like where my shoes at. You know, I call all shoes, shoes. So there's no, so there's no church shoes. There's no dress shoes. <laughs> there's no say, boots. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, less is usually. Uh, shout out to my man. You know, Chris. Chris, I know he's watching right now. I wear like you know shoes to a business meeting. So, you know, I dress casual all the time. I hardly ever put on a certain tie. So right. they just shoes. So they, <laughs> okay. I got some dress shoes, but I hardly ever, I just. But you just call it, when shoes. you put them on, you just like wearing them hard shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Uncomfortable shoes. Uncomfortable shoes. All right. Would you rather have a phone call or a text? Text. Man, we are killing this. Killing it. Let's go. Uh, I already know the answer to this because barbecue, good barbecue or good seafood? Mm, seafood. Ooh. You thought I was gonna say yeah. barbecue. I thought you were gonna say barbecue. I thought you were gonna say barbecue. But I'm, I'm with. I, it's a really toss up for me. It's yeah. a toss up for me. I, I'm, I'm great at both. I'm great. At, I, I, I mean, I'm just you know, I, I would consider myself a humble man. But in this book, I talk about how it's one thing that makes me lose a little humility, and that's cooking because God has blessed these hands. <laughs> <laughs> he has blessed these hands. Okay. All right. So I usually ask this. I'm, I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Rap music. Or old school R and B. Old school R and B. Yes. Come on, give me old yes. school. Any, oh, day. any day. Any, any day. day. All right. Even though you do rap. Yeah, I do rap. You right. Know? Right. I know the answer to this. We are a lot. Truck or car? Truck. Truck. Give me that truck. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh handshake or hug? Hug. I'm a hugger. Oh. I'm man. a hugger. We're okay. Scary movie, comedy. Comedy. Bam. Come on. Birthday party, wedding. Uh, both of my are a challenge for me. <laughs> I'm gonna say birthday, man. Birthday, birthday. probably yes, yeah, definitely yeah. birthday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, th- you don't have to be. You, forget bias. Just okay. forget it. Okay. Just forget you it. Forget Throw it bias. out. Okay. Be honest about this. Okay. Police officer or fireman? Police officer. Bet. Come on. Uh, no bias came no, in. That? No, no bias. No bias at all. Police officer. If I had to pick a job or if I had to pick one to call, I'm calling a police officer. <laughs> okay. All right. You there we go. Uh, you're home alone, uh-huh. nobody's around, 
if the cameras caught you, would they catch you singing or dancing? Mm. Well, I would say both, but if since I got to pick one, I'm going to say dancing. Dancing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I sing too, though. I, yeah, I, I bet. I ain't like, I'm a little Luther. I ain't big Luther, though. Okay. <laughs> you, <laughs> it took him a second to catch it. that. I got it. Okay. So you are in, you're, you're from Oklahoma City. For you, is it Broadway Extension or I-235? Broadway Extension. Who call it I-235? Maybe a police officer. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. New people to the yeah, city. I call it Broadway Extension. I don't yeah. think I've What does it end? Where does Broadway Extension stop and end? Uh, I would say it starts by Bass Pro. Oh, it starts that far down? That far down. And That's I was, a little bougie. And I would say that it ends when you get to Memorial Road. 122nd-ish. Yeah, yeah right. right. Memor- yeah. So what is it technically? I don't know what it is technically, okay. but it start, but it starts at about, Broadway Extension starts for me. Uh-huh. It starts at about 23rd Street. Oh, okay. And it goes to, you can't get to Edmond. Okay. You can't get to Edmond. You can't get to Edmond. That's no, too far. That's too far. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe Broadway Hefner, uh, 122nd. 122nd, and then yeah, you yeah, start yeah. to cut it yeah. off a little bit. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, are you rolling with Will Smith or Chris Rock right now? <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Y'all stay tuned in. We got to have fun, man. Right. Grab your chicken and your fries or whatever you drink. Uh, man, I'm rolling with Will Smith. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for Chris Rock, man. I do. Don't judge me. Are you can? It's okay. Um, I'm rolling with Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith. That's I a whole conversation that's right there. That's a whole conversation. Yeah. Now, okay, my heart. Listen to me, my heart and just my emotions go out to Chris Rock. But you know what I'm saying, Will Smith, he's that dude, and you know, I mean his wife, he had to he had to sleep with his wife that night. So you know what I'm saying? He, he but but bless he was gonna sleep with his wife that night if he stayed in his chair. You I don't know, they kinda different. <laughs> they got entanglements. <laughs> they got entanglements and things, so bro. <laughs> and that house is really You're big. Too much. So You're it's too a much. good chance that he would have been in a pool house. You think you know she wouldn't I mean? say, you didn't stand up for me, Will. You didn't stand up for me. You th- okay, Jada, that's a whole co- Oh yeah, Jada would have probably The worst she was gonna do was was put it on red table or pink table or green table, whatever table she was talking at. That's all she could do. Think about what you just said. The worst. The worst. Now one of the worst moments we And it was still on the, the table. Red, is, is on, is, is, and it was still on the table anyway. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so do anyway. if you ask me who was wrong, Will Smith was wrong. Okay. Right? Absolutely. No question about it, right? Um, so you're rocking with wrong. Okay, I, next question. I grew up right. with Fresh Prince, man. Well, rock, rock with wrong. Rock I, with I wrong. don't know any Chris Rock movies and show. I, well, I do. I know some movies. I don't know any of his stand-up comedy, but I can rap Will Smith. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Y'all can unfollow me if y'all didn't like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just saying. Okay, bedtime, TV on or TV off? Off. Mm. I kind of miss you on that one. <laughs> kind of miss you on that one. That's it. I'm, I, well, I'm, I'm going to say um, left turn, you're going to Bobo's Chicken. Right turn, you're going to Leo's Barbecue. Which one are you going to? Bobos. Oh, okay. Bobos. That's good. If you would have asked me 20 years ago, I would have said Leo's. Okay. You know, shout, I mean, shout out to Leo, but I mean, like now, Bobos for sure. You I, did I good. Can't say, I can't. Say, yeah. You did good. I got my okay. Well, the, pro, the problem, the problem, I'm going to say this right now uh-huh. because somebody's going to gonna share. I love me some Bobos chicken. Oh, yeah, Bobos. Yeah. I hate the inconsistency of the showing up of Bobos chicken. Oh, I yeah, want to know if I have be there friends in, I have guests in, and I'm like, I want to take you to Bobo's, but yeah. I don't know if they're going to be. I don't know. I don't know. So if it that's seemed like thing. during the summertime, they're consistent. It, it's like when the, when the weather is unpredictable or in the spring or winter, it seemed like they're more like inconsistent then. But, but I'm going to tell you, I, it, there's been times where I've been disappointed because when my family come out of town, or especially when my son. I want to give them something special. I want to give them something different. Something they can't different. get anywhere else. And when it's closed, and I, I shed a tear. Yeah, it's bad. Right here. So get that consistency up. Whoever's friends, get, connect us. I'll have them on the yeah. show and we can talk about I love Bobos. We can talk about that. Shout out to Bobos. All right, Les, tell me, everybody knows, a lot of people know. I mean, you're in front of 60,000 people every week. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of people know you for that. I know you for that and, 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 and. Mm-hmm. Tell, the, give, us a, give us a snapshot of who Les Thomas is. Man, snapshot, I would say Les Thomas is the guy that grew up in brokenness, um, a lot of childhood trauma, um, that had a mom that got on her knees and prayed every night, a mom that spoke to the potential more than the problem. In fact, I'm at the place, it's crazy that we're we're at the same building 
that I fell where I flunked the fifth grade. Fifth grade. So here at Green Pastures, I mean, when I when I came on the campus, it was surreal to me because this place represented a place of failure for me. And now to be returning because of the good things that God has done in my life is mind blowing. The same place that I failed, um, because I, that's when I found out I could make people laugh and be a class clown, which has now helped me now. I guess it was getting me ready for what I'm doing now. But, <laughs> you know, um, um, I would say he's, I'm a guy that, you know, that had to overcome some things, um, you know, uh, out here in Spencer, growing up in Midwest City, uh, just had a mom that believed in me. And then, you know, a, a guy that just overcome is the overcoming has what pro has produced hope in me. Right. Yeah. And so now hope's just, it just spews out of me. It's what I live by. It's what I walk by. It's what I believe by. Everything is hope. So I'm a guy that, that loves my family. Um, I'm a I'm a guy that when I first had my family, when I first got married, I failed over and over again because I didn't have the blueprint on how to lead, how to be a husband, how to be a father. So I had to overcome that as well, not only childhood trauma, but overcome um, the lack of knowledge that I had on how to lead. And I surrounded myself with some good people, uh, mentors, I believe in mentors right here where we're sitting. Mr. Green was my first mentor that helped me navigate the, the, the waters that I was going through while I was here. And then when I got married, surrounded myself around some good mentors that helped me become the husband and the father that I am today. So more than anything, my greatest accomplishment by far is my family. That's the greatest hurdle that I could have spent the most time and energy on overcoming because I failed at it in the beginning. But I will tell you now, I'm not gonna say I'm the greatest husband, I'm not gonna say I'm the greatest father, but I'm dang so better than what I used to be. That's good, yeah. that's good stuff. But you mentioned, you mentioned you went to school here at Green Pastures. Yes, sir. Talk, walk us through your educational path through, you know, because we share we share something. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. But walk us through that. Walk okay, us through that. so um, I grew up in uh, neighborhood in Midwest City, neighborhood called Murder One. A lot of people know it. I grew up there. I went to Telstar. Then I went to Green Pastures. Um, I failed here in the fifth grade. Then I went on to Rogers Middle School, and then I had some trouble in seventh grade uh, where I got removed from school, and so. Um, my mom wanted me to go to Millwood. She saw the vision of Millwood being in my life. I tried to go there at the end of fifth grade, but I had a juvenile <coughs> record at that age, so Millwood wouldn't let me in. So she gave up custody of me um, the end of seventh grade so I can go to Millwood. My uncle, shout out to my uncle Paula and Olivia. So that's when I got to Millwood. That's what we share. You know, I we went to, share Millwood. Yeah, I we was born on Millwood. Here, here's the thing, man. I'm going to tell you, let me get something out here, man. And I, we're both legends. We, we're we got, both. Come we on, got now. we got the Legend Award. We Shout got out the Legend to, Award. Shout yes. out to Millwood. You know, I'm mean, yeah. on the East Side. I was born on 43rd and Prospect, came to Midwest City. Then I went back to the East Side, went to Millwood, which is was a great blessing. I believe that saved my life. Not saying that I would be dead, but I don't believe my life would be where it's at if I didn't go to Millwood. And next thing you know, what for Millwood to honor the evolution of you, myself, and 48 other people. Um, when it was 50 Famous Falcons, man. That is something we share. That's something I'm proud about. Um, I love what I do now in my life, but for someone to honor the evolution of a man or a woman, um, I got 21 referrals in my fr my freshman year in ninth grade, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wasn't nobody thinking about me being no famous Falcon in ninth grade. Right. And then for the school to say that we're honoring the growth of this man or this woman, come on, that's phenomenal. We heard, we heard, we heard Joe Carter say, this was that award was better than him winning the MVP. Yeah, he cried. He cried. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. That's cool. But when he, we talk about colleges and all kind of stuff, but really, people talk about where they cut their teeth. Yeah, yeah. They cut their teeth in high school. I always talk about. Yeah, I went to University of Oklahoma, but out of, after high school. But when they asked me where I went, you to went school, to where? University of Oklahoma. University. But don't Where's, don't don't trip. I don't even. I'm think not I even, even letting you. That's cool. I'm I've letting you. Oklahoma, I'm letting you wear the orange <laughs> and drive and park you know, that thing. You know what I'm, I'm not saying? even saying you anything see that about on the it. Chest. Don't act like y'all. Not saying anything about it. But my school <laughs> is Millwood. Yeah. That school is Millwood. Mm -hmm. Now, and my kids went to other schools, and so I support uh, the, the Oklahoma City Public School District, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But when you talk about where I cut my teeth. Come and on. to be honored to be to be listed as a as a as a famous Falcon, yeah, that's a big deal. It's a it's a huge deal, and, and it, for for young cats like me that came le later, it's because you know people like yourself, you know, y'all established like your era helped estab establish Millwood to become what it is now. And I know it's been up and down, but here's the thing: is like when I got to Millwood, there's a reason my mom wanted me to go to Millwood. I got there in '92. 
It's a reason why. It's because of people like yourself. Y'all had established this aura or this atmosphere of Millwood that it wasn't that Millwood was better than any other school, but it was just that Millwood was known for um, um, trying their best to succeed and excel in areas that other schools wasn't. And you were part of that, man. Yeah, I you appreciate it. I love it. Nope. 87. Seven. 87. 87. 87. 87. Okay, there we 87. go. 87, yeah. 87, yeah. Listen, <clears throat> let's go. You're talking, about, you're talking about who you are today. Yes, sir. And I know we're going to talk about the book. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the book. Okay. But so much of what we talk about with you, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, I introduced you as, as you came up because you were about to do a, <clears throat> a TEDx talk. When you came up, I said, Les is the hype man of hope. He is the hype man of hope, and you just said you're all about hope. You're all about hope. You're all yes, about sir. hope. Absolutely. Before we get into the book, man, can you tell us exactly? Give the give give the what? What is hope, and how do we identify it? Well, first, let me say thank you for giving me that name. I have been trying to figure mm-hmm. out what title do I have because I knew I wanted to put hype man and hope, and there was times where I had the Y and I removed it and put the O, and I just couldn't work it out. So when you said hype man of hope, I was like, boom, that's it. Um, so, so hope is an earnest expectation. Hope is something that mm. um, can save you, literally, your life or your job or your marriage or your relationship with your kids. Hope is an anchor. It's an anchor for me. It's an anchor for my soul, right? And so you say, Les, what is an, an, what is an anchor? So if hope is an anchor, uh, the, the purpose of an anchor with a boat is not to stop the boat from moving. It's to stop the boat from drifting away. And so when you're in a boat, you still feel the motion and the ways of, of life, mm-hmm. but the anchor stops you from drifting away. So, so hope is the expectation of whatever situation I'm in, it may be taking me, it may be impacting me mentally, emotionally, it may be draining me, but I have hope that things can get better. We heard, we heard Jesse Jackson say, keep hope, hope alive. Hope is keeping people alive. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Literally, literally like hope. I sat down with a friend today that was going through something major in, in her life. And she literally told me that hope kept her alive. Like that, let, that let, happened today. Let's make it plain, man. Like you okay. did. Let's make it plain. Yeah. What you're saying is, in a nutshell, hope is just basically this belief mm-hmm. that tomorrow. That tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be better than right now. Tomorrow is going to be better than right now. I just believe tomorrow is going to be better than right now. But people lose belief. They do. That's where you come in. Talk about mm, that. Come on, somebody. So here's the thing. Um, we are the sum of our circle. So if your equation isn't adding up to where you want it to be in life, I ask you and I gently challenge you to survey your circle. So if you find yourself not having any hope, I will say, who are the five main voices in your life? Because they may, they may, they may be the one that's draining the hope. They may be the one that's not helping you where you are already struggling with a la- lack of hope. Because I can tell you in my life, when I have lost hope, um, my faith in God has helped me for one. And then two, having some positive people in my life to tell me that things are going to get better. And for some, it's like uh, counseling may be, may be the answer. Mm-hmm. It's nothing wrong with counseling. You and I grew up in an era where counseling was unheard of, but now we finally have gotten to the place to say that, you know what, I can't fix myself. It's kind of like somebody saying, hey, um, before I come to Jesus, I'm going to fix myself. It's impossible for you to fix yourself, <laughs> right? And right. so all this trying to, I mean, we know that mechanics got the worst car. Right. They do. They ain't working on, they working on everybody, everybody else's car, but they car. And so the thing is, sometimes when you think you can fix yourself, you may find yourself running out of gas of hope. And so what I would say is surround yourself with some people that can help you have hope where tomorrow, well, tomorrow can be better or next week, and it may take some time. But here's the thing. What I will also say is to survey your own life and think about the times that you thought you were at the end of your rope and you're still here. Mm -hmm. The Mm -hmm. times you wanted to let go, and you're still here. The times you wanted to throw in the towel and say, I'm done, but you're still here. 
And as long as you're still here, if you're listening to us, that means you're still here. That means there's a chance for you to still have hope and get to where you want to be. You know, so it's it's not easy. I mean, Sue, when I'm when my mama passed, let's keep it 100. When my mama passed, initially, I had an abundance of hope and I I did have a peace that surpassed our understanding. But my wife will tell you, about three months after my mom passed, my hope was on empty. Mm-hmm. My hope was on empty, and you say, "Less." How did this hope that you had lost? How did that return to your life? Is because I started thinking about the words that my mom said to me. I started thinking about the things that my mom. Again, this goes back to your circle. I started thinking about the mentors in my life. I started thinking about my wife and my kids. That I had a reason to live. I had a reason to keep going because sometimes you are the answer or the key to someone else's life. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the thing, regardless, don't look at no money, don't look at no status, don't look at your house, don't look at your car, someone is watching you and I promise you, I don't care what your status is, I don't care what level you're at, someone's watching you and you're giving them hope. The fact, listen, you could have lost everything in your life, but someone is watching you because you didn't throw in the town. Mm. They was like, how in the world is this person still living and they lost their kid. They lost their family. They lost their job. They lost everything, but they still living. I see hope in that, man. Mm. So you you do you you I watch you. Mm. I wa- I'm watching uh uh my favorites are the one minute or less. Okay, my yeah, favorites I need to bring are those. those back, man. Those are my favorite. Uh, so I'm watching back. a yeah. lot and and then yeah. I listen a lot. Mm. And what you are, I would identify you as a hope carrier. Yes, sir. And that's a guy that's like Boom, let me drop a little hope on you. Boom, yeah. let me drop a little hope on you. Yeah. But there's sometimes you don't I, I see sometimes you like you're you're not dropping hope on them people. You're just kind of recognizing them. How do you recognize? How does help us recognize a person that needs a little hope? What does it look like? What is their language? What do they say? How do yeah. you know when you're going across a kid and you're dealing with all these kids at the schools that you're at and you go, wait a minute, y'all go ahead, hold up, young man, hold up, young woman, let me drop a little bit of hope on you. How do you know? Well, I think it start off. It starts off with being intentional, mm-hmm. um, because one, as a mentor, if if I'm a, with my mentee or if I'm just around a family member or a friend, it's being intentional and listening to them, watching their body language. Um, do they sound a little different than they used to be? The key to that is being intentional. And you say, well, Les, man, that word intentional is used so much and it's overused, but really, that is the answer. Like. If I'm with someone and I'm not giving them my undivided attention, how will I know that they're lacking hope? Because everyone has a pattern in their life. Like for me, I mean, like I tell you, uh, two weeks ago, I was really tired after the TEDx. And I had went to this man's gathering and one of my friends thought something was wrong with me because I wasn't all loud. I wasn't all like having something to say, but really I was empty, bro. And, but that friend checked on me. Mm -hmm. That friend checked on me. And so my thing is, it's like, there's people waiting on you. In fact, let me say this. You speak of one minute or less. One time I did um, a one minute or less on on suicide prevention and bringing up a suicide awareness. And and almost everyone that had a failed attempt, they were waiting for someone to stop them. Mm. They were waiting. A guy that a guy that was about to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, he said when he left out his apartment, when he got in the in the Uber, um, he said when he walked, when he got out the Uber and he walked from the car down the bridge, he said he was just hoping that someone was gonna speak to him. He said, if someone says hello to me, I'm not gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So so the thing is, it's like being intentional, intentional, um, uh, letting others be before yourself, right? Because when you're caught up in yourself, sometimes it's impossible to see what others are going through. Um, but I say watch the body language, look at people. You can see it in their eyes. Um, sometimes you might miss it. I'd, I'd rather do what my friend did last week and and ask someone if everything is okay than for me to assume that everything is okay or everything will be all right because there's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people suffering out here and um, they're just waiting for someone to, to love on them and give them love. And so in my life, you know, um, how I look at how I look at it with my life, what keeps my hope glass full is I really reflect on my life. I reflect, even in the bad times, I reflect on my life and I think about, dude, you could have been dead at 12. 
Mm. Or do, you know, you could have went down the pathway that many of your friends did in your neighborhood. You could be, you could not be here or you could be in prison or you could be here or there. So when I think about that, I just think about, you know what, I don't have what I, what I want and I may not be where I would like to be. But man, I honor that I have made a few good decisions to get me to where I'm at and miracles has happened in my life time after time again. And again, that's why I say, I mean, I ain't trying to preach or nothing, but you know, you know, when they, you know, uh, you know. Well, listen, yeah. listen, I, I want to talk about okay. the suicide prevention thing, but before we do that, yeah, because I had, I had a text message from a mentee I randomly text mm -hmm. yesterday mm. and the tone of the text was hopeless. Mm. The tone of the text was hopeless. And I started texting back uh, some intentional stuff and, and what you touched on, I believe may have saved a life. Mm. May have saved a life. You were intentional. You gave him your time. You noticed. You paid yeah, attention. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about that. But before we do that, the stuff that you just mentioned, uh, about hope and looking back over your life, I have to think triggered, triggered you to write this book, Three yes. Levels of Influence. Yes. Show the book, man. Let's show the book. So this, is, this is it. Boom. Yeah. Three Levels of Influence. I finally have it in my hand. I've been <laughs> knowing about this for about two years. Yeah, you wrote the forward, man. Shout out to him. Look at that. <laughs> Waylon Cuban down here. Les Thomas Sr. Waylon forward by Waylon Cuban, man. You know. Wow. Yeah, come on. Your name is on the front of my Boom. book. Boom, zoom it. I didn't even, I didn't know. Come on, I man. I didn't know. Now you know. Now you know, because wow. you've, been, you've been a mentor in my life. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure people already know that, but you've been, a, when something's going on with Les Thomas, I call, <laughs> I call Waylon Cubitt and, and Hetty. That's the two that I call. So. We got a pretty cool group text yep, going on that we cannot transcribe and share with anybody. <laughs> no, we cannot. it is very raw, raw thinking. No, don't tap raw, in our phone and go no, see don't what tap we the phone. That's right, that's right. Well, tell me about what, what got you here and what are we going to get? I mean, well, man, um, I, I am, again, I, as I, I gave so much props to my mom, my mother and I do, um, there was only so much that my mom could do. You know what I'm saying? In an environment we had, lack of resources. And as I, as I stated, the place that I sit now, where we sit, is where I failed. And Mr. Green was the first mentor in my life that helped me overcome challenges as a young man. And um, from that moment, I saw the benefit, even in my young adolescent years, I saw the benefit of having a positive person in my life, not to tell me what to do, um, but just to like give me some accountability and um, you know, be a strong voice and, and a voice of wisdom and, and a voice of reason in my life, man. And so um, as I got older, you know, I just talked about it earlier, even in my, my early marriage years, uh, even in my foolishness, I realized less you need someone in your life. Mm. And, you, and you heard me say earlier, we are the sum of the voices in our life. And when I was 24, 25, and if you're listening, if, you, if you're in your 20s, man, you know what? I know it's cool to be with the homies, do that, hang out with every, everyone, but sit at the feet of elders. Wow. Level one. Level one. When I was in my 20s, I sat down with people that was 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years older than me on purpose. Before coffee shops was cool, I was sitting having coffee with people that was 30 years older than me. Um, because I, I knew that I didn't have all the answers. In fact, I knew I didn't have most of the answers. And so this book was birthed from a place of, I have not the answer, you know what I'm saying? Kanye was like, so wait, you ain't got the answers, you know? Somebody, somebody might say, "Less, you ain't got the answers, but I have some answers, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, let me give a blueprint of what has helped Les Thomas. So I'm really, really honest in here because it's a quote that you said to me three or four years ago that I, that I still live by and I have said it a thousand times like I'm the one that came up with it, but it came from you. <laughs> and that is, if you wanna impress people, you share your victories. If you wanna impact people, you share your flaws or your challenges Amen. or things that you've been through. So in this book, I'm really honest because I know how some people may um, look at less and I'm like, it's important for you to know that the ballerina that you see going across the stage, all beautiful looking like a swan, got some jacked up toes. That's because <laughs> she's been putting in the work so yes, she right. can look beautiful above She make it look easy. She, she makes make it, it look easy. easy. And so it's I'm, I know I don't make it look easy, but what I will say. You do make it look easy. I mean, you know, well, I'll praise the guy, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's not me. 
um, that's that's all you know him. But what I will say is, it's because it's been some ugly times in my life. That's what I'm so ugly I'm so times. grateful that you put the book out and you share the scars, the yes. falls, yep. the failures, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, the, and the thing. And this is part of the thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I was going to call you about it, whether or not we had this conversation live yeah. or not anyway. Yeah. But that call is about those failures, right? Uh -huh. And what I'm, what I'm saying is I believe people look at you, me, uh, many of the people I have on the show, and because we're talking to them because they have some influence and we're talking to them because they have a story to tell. And yeah. all that. So people think that, man, when I just, if I could just get to the next step, it, things would be easier. Mm. If I could just get to, uh, if I can just get to ninth grade, yeah. If I could just get to that other neighborhood, mm -hmm. if I can just get to this dollar amount per hour, if I can just land that job, mm -hmm. it'll just get easier and easier and easier and easier and easier. Yeah. But what, what, what I want them to know is that <clears throat> although it looks easy, mm -hmm. I've just learned how to do hard well. And say that right? again. Say, you, that, say that one more what time. What you have done yeah. is you've mastered doing, getting through the hard stuff. Yeah. Hope gets you through the hard stuff. Hope. Hope gets you through the hard stuff. It's gonna get better. I know yeah. it is. Why is it gonna get better? Because that last hard thing got better. Absolutely. And so I got through it. Well, you, you got through it, and and you know, um, and you heard you've heard me say this before. Like, um, I'm walking in the influence of hope. Like, hope influences me daily. Mm -hmm. So, if we talk about three in, three levels of influence, what's influencing you? You know, what are you putting in your mind and your heart every day? What are you putting out? What are you listening to? Who are you talking to? And so the three levels of influence, it's about, boom, I got my mentor here where I can tell um, things, too, that I may not share on social mm -hmm. media. Right? Level one. Yep, that's What's number two? one. So two is that's your peers. That's your iron sharpens iron. This is where you discover your why. Who Ooh. are you and why do you believe the way you believe? Because there's friction at this level. This level right here, you, you, you're, you're, you're somewhat submitted to, right? And so submission is a different than is different than iron sharpens iron. Iron has to clash, right, to get sharpened. So here is where you discover your why. This is the one that can see how you really are with your wife and kids. See, your mentor kind of sees uh, the part that you show them and um, what you tell them, and when they ask you questions, but they don't really get to see the the inside of your life. This level right here is really important because they can see if you're being a jerk to your kids or your wife, or if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing um, outside of your marriage or outside talking, of- Talking one way, acting another. They know who you really are. Okay. So the second level is important. And then the third level is, that's where you're passing everything from the first, second, first and second level to the third level, because what's important about that level is, it's proven um, that you learn more when uh, you retain more whenever you teach, right? Right, you can't put on a front. You can't put on the front. You cannot. It's hard to teach what you don't know. Exactly. And <clears throat> the thing is, one thing I truly live by is, man, I'm not trying to climb a mountain by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be a serpent. A serpent climbs, makes sure it's safe, safe, comes back and get people. While you're there and you're waiting, the serpent goes up. So the serpent is climbing the mountain twice when you climb it once. Because the Sherpa is knowing the terrain, they learning the terrain, making sure it's safe. They go up, they come back, they take people with them. They go back up while the people are here, they come back and get the people. And so the thing is, is like, if you got something to give, which that's all of us, you got to be a Sherpa in people's life, come back and get them and, and take them with you. Because I'm not trying to get at the mountaintop of my life and have no one to high five. That's good, man. You know what I'm saying? That's good. So, so level one is... You sitting at the feet, me sitting at the feet of somebody mm -hmm. learning. We all need somebody need that. that is dropping some knowledge. We, the, 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 the story I always tell, I gave a talk this, this weekend to a room full of for mentors. Shout out to Whiz Kids. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them the story of my dad uh, taking me to, 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 to St. Louis. We were, we were in the, I was a little kid, yeah. and he's talking on the CB radio. And he was, uh, I wanted him to race the cars mm -hmm. in our lane. But he was hesitant to take off yeah. until he talked on his CB and asked the other people on the other side of the highway uh, what, the, what it would look back over their shoulder, how did it look back over their shoulder. Yeah. And they told him that there was a Smokey uh, at mile marker so-and-so ahead. And when we came over the hill and looked down, the highway patrol was pulling people over. Wow. And I said, Dad, how'd you know that was happening? He said, because if you want to know the way, 
you always ask those coming back. Come on, man. Right? And so every last one of us is on a journey. And if we're on a journey and we want to know what lies ahead, yeah. we got to have a mentor or somebody to tell me what's up ahead. What did they experience on their way back? Why bump your head when you don't Why? want to? Why? So when we say mentor, we always think about teenagers and all that kind of stuff. No. 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 We didn't, listen, here's the thing. The other thing is people think about teenagers and they think about business. Business. Yes, they do. They think about business. Yeah, when, when you yeah. become an adult, oh, I need a mentor so I can move up in the business. No, nah, bro. Like, the better I am as a person is the better my business will be. And so the same way, if, if, if I'm trying to climb the mountain of the business of my life or, you know, whatever I'm trying to accomplish in my life, if my character is here because I'm not being sharpened, but my business mind is up here, I'm out of balance. There you right? go. <clears throat> and so I need someone in my life to help me. I, I will say that a life mentor is more important than a business mentor. For sure. 100%. For sure. For sure. Then the level two is the accountability piece, right? Accountability. That you're saying, these are my these are my boys, these are my people, these are my family, some members of my family mm -hmm. uh, that's, that can see yeah. that I'm hanging out with that mentor, mm -hmm. talking about what I learned from my mentor and then displaying something else that can check you to say, that ain't, that, that ain't what it is. Yeah, because they see the real you. They see the real you. That's the one that you're going on vacation with. They see you for a whole week. They, they see know what it really right, is. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. And then, and then the third level is passing it on. Mm -hmm. Pass it on. And this whole book is talking about how to be mentored, how to be accountable, and how to share. And I also, it, the other thing is, like, some people, they get a little, like, eh, you know, when they hear the word mentor, because I don't, they say, I don't want to be responsible mm -hmm. for someone else. And as a mentor, you're not responsible for them. You're right. not God in their life. What you're doing is just, I like to look at a mentor like this. When you play a pinball machine, you hit that ball, and that ball go wherever you want to go. But whenever it go too far, go to that thing kind of <laughs> hit it. That's what a, men a mentor is at. Up your back in. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to when y'all see me on the street, just go to and I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's what a mentor, is your, a mentor in your life is like. I mean, it, you, you get wise counsel. If I, if I have a tough decision in my life, why would I want to make that decision by myself? Like, I w it seemed like you would want to surround yourself with some good people um, to try to help you. And there's a chapter, and I say, why do life alone? Because many people are doing life alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I can't do this life alone, man. <clears throat> and so, again, me opening up my life, which is not easy. It's not easy to be accountable to someone. It's not easy to share some of your dark secrets with someone. It's not easy for someone to be in your business, but it's necessary. Right. I want to go to a, I want to go to a moment. So going back to that text message I got, mm -hmm. that text message I got clearly said this person was was ready to end it mm -hmm. for themselves. Clearly said it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but number one rule, and you talk about it, I think uh, many times, or we talked about it many times. It's probably in the book. Well, I know it's in the book. I'm pretty sure it's in the book. Yeah. As you talk about how your mother spoke to you, and so uh, your mentor, uh, your mom, and your your mentor should always speak to your potential that you possess, not the problem that you caused, Come on, man. right? And your mother did that. Talk about how your mother talked, spoke to your potential and not your problem. Well, I, I say, I, I'll use where we're at right now. Um, so, um, when I failed the fifth grade, man, it was like really, it was really hard. You know, me and my, it was just me and my mom, lack of resources, and there's times where we didn't have, you know, it, 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 we didn't have much. And so when I when I failed the fifth grade, man, you know, in my mind, um, I'm a failure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, you know, um, I'm just going to be like any other kid uh, that may fail. And in the type of environment I was in, I was already headed down the road of being a product of my environment. And so in the midst of, I'll never forget sitting in the, in the living room with my mom, you know, looking at this pink piece of paper, you know, saying that I failed. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, most parents would rip their kid a new one. And in that moment, my mom made sure that she not only spoke to my future, but she spoke to the potential and the king that was inside this little boy. And so she embraced me, even in the midst of her tears, uh, telling me that everything was going to be all right. 
and my mom always told me that God had call, has called me to do great things. In the middle, think about the best time to focus on the potential is in the middle of a problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not days later. In the middle of a problem, she called out the greatness in me. It's the same thing she did in the courtroom, which you've heard it. And if you follow me, you've heard it. It's one of the one of the greatest memories in my life that fuels the hope in me today is when the um, judge was sentencing me um, when I was, I guess I was 12. Uh, she grabbed, she interrupted the judge, grabbed my face, got about six, in, six inches from my face. And she said, this moment will not define you. God has called you to do great things. Do not allow these people to make you think that you're a bad person. In the middle, in the midst, my mom could have waited till we got out the courtroom. Mm -hmm. She could have waited till we got home. In the middle of the problem, she spoke to the potential. Right. Imagine a world, imagine our marriage, imagine our family, imagine our job, imagine our community, imagine our neighborhood if we focus more on the potential of something or someone more than the problem. Right. Totally different it's world, the, it's the It is that methodology, it is that mindset, yeah. right? That master mentors, uh -huh. and there's a, and I can name Marcus Jackson, I can oh, name, I can so name many. so many master mentors yeah. we have in our town that people just don't even tap into all the time. Uh, when uh, These are who you ought to be calling when you have problems with your kids because they're not gonna tell you how to fix your kid, they're gonna tell you how to talk to your kid, Yeah. right? But anyway, the, the, the potential is, look, I know you're going through a hard time. Uh -huh. I know you're going through a difficult time. Let me show you what I see. Mm. You possess this skill. Yeah. You put, you have this gift, you have this talent, and that means this down the road. Mm. This That gift and talent you have, when you get through this, equals that. You're not the problem. I know the situation, if you feel like you're the problem, but son, young man, you are the solution to somebody's problem. Come on. Right? This right here, this right here is not supposed to be easy. Mm. In fact, if anybody ever told you that life was going to be easy, I'm here to tell you the truth. They lied. Mm. Easy after every, what, once you get this down, yep. hard follows. Hard, hard follows. Hard follows. It does. You have to learn how to do good. Hard well. Like well. you said earlier. You have to learn how to do hard and, and, well. And it makes me think about, you know, um, one of the things I often say I did what they said I did, but I'm not who they say I am. That was a classic, man. That's a, that, I hope that you put that quote in that book. I'm not sure. So it, it better be in this I'm book. It, I'm going to write another one. But, <laughs> it better but, be uh, in this book. But it's the truth. Tell book. them what that means. What that means is like, you know, you may be guilty of what people are saying. You stole a car. You stole a car. You set the house on fire. You set the house on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you broke into a house or, you know what I'm saying, you might have uh, broke your vows or you might have did something like, you know, uh, stole something out of a store, um, or you might have mistreated someone at work or whatever in your life, whatever's going on in your life, um, and you did that. You're guilty of you did that. That's true. That's true. But the fact is, that's not who you are. So just because you did it doesn't mean that you are that person. I mean, you know, so so the things that in my young Young year, younger years, when I flunked here, you know, when I got kicked out of school, when I went to uh, juvenile uh, center, I, I did those things, but that's not who I am. And so if you're listening right now, if you're watching, you may be guilty of a few things that you may be ashamed of in your life, uh, but I'm here to tell you that that's not who you are. Man, so this book is a absolute must have. I'm, so, I'm I waited till I saw you to get my hands on it. I could have yeah. went to Amazon. I could have done like this. But when you know the author, when you know the, when you know the author, I want, I, I want I know the author. I want it to, in my hands. I cannot wait to crack it open and, yeah. and get after it tonight. Tell tell everybody how we get this book and then I want to know how we connect to all the stuff you got going on. Okay, cool, man. To get the book, you just go to uh, lesstimeassenior.com. You can put lesstimeassenior.com forward slash book or just go to lesstimeassenior.com and you'll see a tab that says book. Uh, that'll send you right to the ebook if you want the paperback or the hardback. Uh, and I promise you, like this book, you know, I wrote it from a perspective of if you're 14 all the way up to somebody that's 104. I wrote it from a perspective of if you're already mentoring or if you've never mentored before. I wrote it from the perspective of if you've never been a mentee or if you're currently a mentee. So the way I wrote it, 
is um, it's not a hard read at all. Um, the way that I wrote again, let me say, let me say this too. Let me speak to the hype thing. Yeah. Um, yep. If you're looking for a hype book, this is not a hype book. This is a workbook. This is a workbook. <laughs> this is a not life a workbook, but this a workbook. workbook. Yeah. Exactly. It's not a hype book. It's a life book. So if you're thinking like I'm gonna get a piece of less in this book that he, he's gonna give me the rah rah speech before I go on the court or on the field, it's not that book. This book is the book that you go in a room, cut off the lights, watch a film of your life, and say, "What adjustments can I make to be better?" Mm. That's what this book is about. It's not easy from a standpoint of looking in a mirror. This is a look in the mirror book, but the key the key to, for me to be to where I am is I looked in the mirror. I had people giving me a reflection of what they saw or what I needed to hear, what I didn't want to hear. No one wants to hear that you need to correct this or that. But if I want to be the best that I'm going to be, if I want to um, reach my maximum potential, it's imperative that I have not people in my life that's going to say, yeah, yeah, you right, you right, when, when you dead wrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got somebody, you got somebody, you need somebody <clears throat> in your life that's going to say, yeah, I love you, but you shouldn't have did that. Right. Or I would have did this like this or that. A mentor does not tell you what to do. They just give their insight on what they think you should do. It's still uh, up to you to take the medicine. A doctor can't make you take medicine. They prescribe. And if you take it, usually it'll help you. If you don't, you're in the same place you were at. So. You know. I love it, man. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing this. Now, here's what people need to know, too. Mm -hmm. You are phenomenal phenomenal speaker. Oh, now here's what I said. Thanks, I did not say, I did not say motivational speaker. I did not say inspirational speaker. People will put that tag on there. Yeah. I'm going to say you're just a speaker. Man, and man. the reason I'm saying just a speaker, because I remember telling you this as you preparing for your TED talk. Mm -hmm. I remember saying, uh, Les, do not go up there and share a motivational speech. Mm share with them an inspirational life, yeah. right? Yep. And this you book, did. if you've been, if you put in this book stuff that you've shared with me about your life, if you oh, put yeah, this I in have. here, this is an inspirational life that you share in the pages of this book, yep. and I can't wait. But how do we get you to come and speak to our kids? How do we get you on the stage? How do we get help? <laughs> is it through the, through the same website? Yeah, yeah, you can go to the web. I mean, a lot of people have been, it's been crazy the last two or three months, like text, texting our DM and about coming to speak. But um, you can go to the best way uh, that makes me, it, it holds me accountable to response is uh, lesthomassenior.com forward slash booking. So if you go to lesthomassenior.com, there's a, a tab that says booking. It's going to ask you some questions of when, where, um, what do you need from me? Because the truth is, I'm glad you used the word speaking because sometimes people put me in a box of just a hype or just motivational, but you and I know that I've done DEI. You and I know that I've went into places, um, organizations have brought me in to say, we're having challenges in this. Can you help us with this or that? So, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to be a multifaceted person and I don't say that in pride, I just say that you're balanced. I'm, I'm balanced. You're balanced. So like, yeah, you're balanced. If you need some energy, I got you. I got that. If you need some gentle correction, I got that. If you just say, you know what, we just need these areas to be fine tuned, um, I can come in that way too, man. So yep. And yeah. you can ask them not to wear the OSU stuff. Yeah, you can, I, put you, them can, yeah you can ask. Do a football season. It's gonna be hard for me not to. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, I I I got some whole coaching That's stuff. That I use, I usually when That's I go right. into a place, it depends on what it is. If it's fun, I might do it just to mess with you. But if it's like serious, I won't wear OSU because I want to make sure that there's nothing in the way of you receiving what I have for you. So I love I you, man. I love you. I love your family. Yeah. I love everything about. We got tons more conversations, and y'all yeah. don't know. After we'll cut off this live, there'll probably another 20, 30 minute yeah, conversation yeah, that's what we do, about this stuff. That's what we do. Thank you so much for tuning in. Connect. Get the book. Three levels of influence. I endorse it. I wrote the Ford. I didn't. Even, I, I wrote the Ford, and honestly, did not know it made the cut. You know, editing and all that stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get to my car to read Ford. To make sure they didn't edit anything uh, out. You killed it, man. <laughs> His forward alone is about good as the book. I appreciate you know. it. That's so much. We'll see you next week.